this week on the Roommates Podcast. I think a lot of women, they may or may not realize it, but they're when they go on a date with a guy, even if you're not, quote unquote, in the limelight, even if you maybe not even considered high value, if in that date she determines, oh my gosh, this is a guy I can see myself with, a lot of women are already uh, imagining the wedding that day. Mm -hmm. Now, some people might say, that's crazy. No, it, it happens for real. But yes, when as you mentioned, when you're an influencer, when you're someone who already has a public image, they're coming into it now. Because mm -hmm. they've already made up in their mind that they want you like that. Mm -hmm. the, the date was just to confirm, so mm -hmm. to speak, at that point. And so now, yes, that, you know, I literally have a video called You Will Always Be the Bad Guy. Because for men in general... When you don't give that woman what she wanted, mm -hmm. she is now going to view you as an F-boy. Yo, what's good, everybody? This is Tom Fees. Chris, the star of the show, baby. And this episode of the podcast is brought to you guys by... Manscape, guys, you know that Manscape is the number one source for all your below the belt grooming needs, and a lot of people love Manscape. Chris, do you love Manscape? I do. You got to trim it up down there, folks. <laughs> you got to get it together. Yeah, man, I love Manscape. I've recommended the product to so many people. So many of you guys have already purchased the Manscape product. And one of the things that Manscape is launching in the new year is their signature cologne. Ooh. For the ladies. Yes, guys. Scent is the next level of leveling up physically because you have to smell good. And guys, that new scent, Chris, how would you describe that new scent? I mean, listen, it works. Every mm. time somebody, you know, give me a little hug, they, they come no, right here. Okay, okay. Just, they come right here and they be like, you smell good. Wow. And I'm like... Baby, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, head over to Manscaped. Go ahead and get the perfect package 3.0 and definitely get that new signature cologne. Yes. Go ahead and use the offer code DOVEROOMMATES at checkout. You get 20% off and free shipping. The link is in the description below. 20% off free shipping. Use the offer code DOVEROOMMATES at checkout. Go ahead and check out Manscaped, and you will thank us later. You're welcome. You're welcome. And Christopher Jordan Bilo. Jesus, what's going on? How you doing today, man? I'm good, man. I love my life. <laughs> <laughs> I love my life. <laughs> I'm enjoying myself. Christopher you know. has been living Stop. the best life a man can live. It's been pretty good. <laughs> it's been pretty good. I'm not going to lie. It's been pretty good. But we like all have. I feel like you've unlocked a new level. I'm being honest with you. Yeah, it feels is, it, is, it, is it safe to say you've unlocked a new level <laughs> in life? <laughs> man. It feels good on this level. You know, it's a nice scenery. <laughs> you know what I mean? Food tastes better. Yes. All those things. <laughs> <laughs> Food tastes better. So what we're going to go ahead and do, you guys see the thumbnail. Yes. We have to bring back the man who made all this possible. And by all this, I don't just mean the Miami, the Miami trip, which mm. we're all enjoying. Yes. I'm talking about who's made the roommates brand what it is who gave us our first big break, who gave us multiple opportunities to succeed and shine. So guys, you know who he is. Please welcome back the one and only Stefan Speaks. <laughs> What's up, y'all? What's up? Yo, you see I call him Stefan Speaks? <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna mess it up. <laughs> I ain't gonna mess it up this time. <laughs> Stefan, welcome back, man. Thank you for having me back, y'all. How you feel, man? How you enjoying Miami? It's cool, you know what I'm saying? You know, I'm from here, so yeah. the weather is beautiful. It's just a chance to relax and just enjoy life, so I'm, I'm enjoying myself. Mm. I love it here, man. Yeah. I don't know why you love yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, Stefan, what has been new for you? For the people who, you know, maybe don't subscribe to your channel, subscribe to your channel. Uh, what's been new for you? What's been going on? What are some of the plans you have going, on to, going into the new year? New for me, um, you know, just adjusting to this post-pandemic, or not even post, because we're yeah, still in it, you know what I'm yeah. saying? This time where things are different, can't tour, can't travel like we used to. Um, so just adjusting to that. So been doing more videos, you know, build, building up the YouTube, doing stuff on TikTok, which I never thought in a million years <laughs> I'd be on TikTok. TikToker. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, just adjusting to the times to just keep the content going, trying to still help the people. Got more books to come this year. Just working, man. So it is the 
feminine energy book coming out this year. <laughs> <laughs> we need it. You know, I can't say <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm going to try to make it work, yeah. but it's in the works. You know what? I'm going to challenge that. you. Like you <laughs> challenge <laughs> By the end of the year, the feminine energy book will drop yes. this year. Yes. Book it. Yes. Oh, man. Man, but no, I, I think um, <clears throat> the reason why I'm excited about bringing you on is because I feel like there's been a lot of business stuff on that people have seen through the podcast. Um, your wisdom is unmatched everywhere you go, whether it's Lewis's show, whether it's our show, whether it's Almost 30. It's always number one episode. Yep. And so I felt like in regards to obviously advice and things along those lines, you're going to do that. That's you. But there's a side to your personal life, you know what I mean, of you just being a person that I feel like a lot of people may not know as much, which is why I really enjoyed you being in the vlog. <laughs> and we got a lot to talk about with the vlog. And I enjoyed you being on the vlog because I think people just think that all you do is sit at home, pray, and fast all day long. <laughs> you know? And so I was like, yo, Stefan is an actual person yep. as well. And he's an individual who likes to enjoy his life. He obviously, he's a man of God, but it doesn't mean he can't enjoy his life as well. Mm -hmm. And so I don't go through the comments on YouTube. Chris goes through the comments <laughs> on YouTube. And one of the things that Chris was sharing with me is that he saw a lot of people complaining when we uh, like were releasing the vlog. And what were some of the things you were hearing, Chris? It was just like, you know... Why, besides all the COVID stuff, we're, we're, we're going to ignore this stuff. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, like, why are we out, you know, in the club, late, you know, drinking, there's women around, you know, they, they, it was just like, you know, they were kind of just like surprised and they were shocked that we were, I guess, indulging in that kind of behavior. I've seen one, one person said the devil is in the club. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, oh my God. So it was just surprising, I guess, for the people to see that side of us. You know, even though we've been saying, you know, we like to go out, we like to have a good time, you know, respectfully. Respectfully. Yes. Yes, yes, so yes, yes. it sounds crazy. Yeah, and so what, what I realized is that there is a level of disconnection when it comes to people who say they're trying to follow God and their ability to have fun, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which leads a lot of people to do stuff behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. And you're a man who I've known to be 100% transparent his whole entire life. And so to me, it was like, why do people feel as though because you're trying to follow God, you're trying to be a man of God, that now means you can't have fun. That now means you can't go out. That now means women can't be around you. You know, that now means that you can't, you know, respectfully, <clears throat> responsibly drink. And so I was wondering if, you know, maybe any of the people hit you up or if you've <laughs> ever experienced anything like that in which, you know, people think that you're Stefan the pastor when you're really Stefan the person. Mm -hmm. So no one, no one hit me up. Um, I actually saw a couple of comments. They were like, Stefan don't look like he even wants to be there. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so I, I wonder if they felt like I was just physically there, but I wasn't really engaging. Yeah. But you know what? I think the issue <clears throat> is really about like how... So in, in, in the... I don't know if you want to call it church community, spiritual community, whatever, believers, there's this attack on behaviors that they feel lead to sin, mm. all right? And will then describe those initial behaviors as sin. So one perfect example I love to use is that people say shacking up is a sin. So for those who don't know shacking up, moving in together and living together. And I will always argue with people, no, having sex before marriage is a sin. Mm -hmm. There's nothing in the Bible that says living together is a sin, mm -hmm. But because we assume that it is an automatic mm -hmm. that you will have sex if you live together, yeah. we attack that, mm -hmm. all right? So in essence, having a drink is not a sin. Yeah. Being a drunk yeah. is a sin, yeah. all right? But the assumption is if you have one, you can't control your liquor mm. and you will become drunk. The assumption is if you're in that club and around women, you're going to engage mm. in sinful behavior, yeah. even if... There's been times, and I'm not trying to use this to yeah. <laughs> me being in the club, but yeah. I promise on everything. There's been times, I, one time I went to the club by myself, I was bored, and this was in Atlanta, 
And I swear, the whole night, I end up talking to a woman about God. <laughs> we was in the club talking about God the whole time. So now, if anyone sees me in the club, they're going to swear I'm doing the devil's work. <laughs> when in actuality, I was spreading the good word for that night, okay? But again, the assumption is, if it looks ungodly on the surface, then it must be ungodly even when they turn their back on it or, you know, behind closed doors, whatever, however you want to phrase it. Mm. So I think that's part of the problem. And people just assume <clears throat> that just going back to the whole living together, like people will say to me, well, it's impossible. Nobody could live together and not have sex. That's not true. Mm -hmm. I know of people who've done it, who've actually lived together. For, it was a short period of time, maybe six months but did not have sex in that six months. Yeah. It is possible, but again, the assumption is anything that even looks like it's going in that direction, you know, we're, we're, we're going to be being sinful. Mm. But how do we, how do we, I guess, <laughs> combat that? Because, you know, we're, we're going to post vlogs, we're going to live our life, but also I don't want that kind of thinking to deter people away from our, you know, YouTube channel or away from the message. Well, so listen, we, we have to understand some arguments are fair, meaning, um, like I think I saw one comment about uh, none of this glorifies God. That's why it's a bad thing. And there's truth. It was not. not we can't say that that do, the the night of the club is glorifying God. But then I would counter and say, well, have you ever been to a sports game? Because that doesn't glorify God. Yeah. I, like I don't know if there's anything in this world that that everyone's engaging in that's a believer that glorifies God. We yeah. can find something in every situation. So we have to understand that some people are looking to judge. Mm. Some people are looking for a way to discredit you and say you're not really a person of God. Hell, even Jesus had people telling him, and we're not Jesus, so I'm not comparing no, 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 You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, no me. But <laughs> I'm saying even Jesus, even some of the greatest men and women of God were questioned in certain moments. And yeah. then that's the other thing. People, so even using that vlog, we literally could be working hard 364 days out the year yeah. and 12 hours. Mm -hmm. But if for 12 hours of the year, we are in the club, that's way too long. So let's just say if for four hours out of the year, we are in the club having fun, yeah. people love to discredit the whole other 99% of your life for that 1%. And I've learned you just can't let it bother you. It, it, and, but at the same time, we don't have to dismiss their concerns. I understand if for the people who saw it, it might have rubbed them the wrong way. Yeah. I get it. But I just, I, you know, I'm just going to encourage them to understand, listen, we, we're all human beings. Um, and, and even if it wasn't the right thing to do, all right, you know what? Then we all make mistakes. We all, we all struggle in certain areas. And also understand we all come from different backgrounds. I think that's the other problem too. Yeah. If you're someone who grew up a believer, strong in the church, never partied, never did anything, then for you to never deviate from that is a lot easier than the person who, and I'll use myself, Man, I grew up. Well, not me. I said I grew up. But in my college years, yeah. we was wild. All right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we did a lot of partying. We yeah. were going to the clubs all the time. And I'm, I'm, you know, I have Caribbean heritage. We like dancing. We like music. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter how old we are. We enjoy that environment. So to now stop that cold turkey, that's a more of a struggle. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So... Be patient if my if I do need to work through some of these things. All right, cool. I'll accept that. But be patient because it's not easy. You know what I'm saying? But again, I, I do think like at the end of the day, the crazy thing is th the day after that, I'm thinking to myself, man, that's great. We can go out, have fun, you know, enjoy ourselves and didn't get into anything bad. Yeah. yeah. I thought that was a win. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But to some people, yeah. just simply being there is going to be a problem. No, I love that point that Stefan brought up about um, <clears throat> the first thing that really stood out to me is that people don't know what we're doing inside of there. You mm -hmm. know? And the thing about the vlog was I was very specific about how I cut it. I showed, you know, four things, well, you know, and one of the biggest things, like Stefan said, is that you guys don't know the conversations that we have when we're in there. Every time that we've ever went out, somebody has come up to you or they've come up to us and they've had a conversation about how we've changed their life and how grateful they are for our content. And we and then you usually, you know what I mean, walk them through their life stories, something like that. They don't understand like, yo, there's a lot of different places 
where you can still glorify God. Because the idea of, oh, that place can glorify God, like, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. To me, glorifying God means to make God look, to make God shine. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? To make God to appear as beautiful as he is, to reflect him. If you're going out with your friends, having a good time respectfully, how are you not glorifying God? How are you somewhat now better glorifying God at a at a at a mini golf place? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, and so I think with the extra religious people, there's this um, level of religiosity that's not even based upon scripture or mm -hmm. based upon really understanding, you know, how to walk with God. And and yeah, no, I think, and that's the part, the reason why I want to bring that up is because I know there's so many guys who when they when they feel <clears throat> that pressure. Mm -hmm from the outside world, they may not be as mature as guys like you and, and, and I, and they'll just give up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so when, when a guy wants to go out and have fun with his friends, and then people are saying, now you're not a man of God, now you're not this, now you're not that, for a lot of guys, like, okay, well, bump the God stuff. If I can't do this, if I can't interact, if I can't still be a regular person, I would rather not even interact with God. I would rather not try to level up spiritually. And that's what I didn't want happening like I said, we can take it because we know how we're living. We know we pray to God. We're okay. But I know for a lot of guys, when people question them and they challenge them when they're just trying to be a regular person, they just give up on spirituality altogether. Yeah, and that's that's part of the biggest problem is that people don't realize all that heavy judgment, all it does is deter the people who are either on the fence or still need to cross that bridge. Mm. And so there's been, I remember even when I was younger, a woman saying to me she did not want to start praying and believing because she didn't feel like she was ready to give up partying mm. and things that they, things that she felt like you have to give up mm. if you're going to become a believer. One of the best things that happened to me <clears throat> when I really developed spiritually was the woman that I was talking to, when I say woman, she was a spiritual leader, she was in the church, um, she said, don't worry about the rules. Don't worry about what you are or aren't doing. Focus on just relationship with God. The rest of the stuff will work itself out. Because what people don't realize is, as you get closer to God, you will start to gain conviction about certain things. It will start to get harder naturally. Your spirit's going to speak to you in a way that it didn't speak to you before. But again, everyone's process is different. And and one of the things, again, I don't want people listening to this to think I'm we're simply trying to justify going to the club because everyone's path is different. Like I, I have a family member who he's never going to be in the club. Mm -hmm. He's never, but because of that, he's never really built to connect with people mm -hmm. who live that life, yeah. who are on the fence. I feel like I'm, I'm positioned in a way that I can connect with those people. And that's one of the things I like about being anywhere that maybe people are surprised to see me is because now it makes you more relatable mm -hmm. and relatable in a way that now they say, dang, maybe I can become more of a believer. Maybe I can connect more with God. Maybe this isn't what I thought it was mm. because, again, the church has made them feel like you can't do nothing wrong mm -hmm. or you're not a quote-unquote real Christian or a real Muslim or real believer, or whatever. Like, yo, stop with all that. Yeah. Let's just focus on their relationship with God. Yes, there's going to be some mistakes. Yes, they're going to do some. And again, everybody does. Everyone has their moments. The difference is not everyone has a vlog. Yeah. Not everyone is going to, you know, show it for the world. Yeah. But while some people, like I even saw one comment said, not everything needs to be shown. Mm -hmm. And at first I was like, they got a point. But then I thought about, I was like, no, think about the people who now will see this and it'll connect with them in a positive way yeah. that can still lead to again actually God being glorified. People just it, it's weird for some people to grasp that, mm -hmm. but you know, again, I, I I think there's a positive to it. You yeah. know, yeah. This this conversation is triggering me. I, <laughs> I, it's honestly triggering me yeah. because I I was in that position where you know you would fall in guy, then people like really like just observe your every single move. You know, if you were mm -hmm. talking to this girl, automatically assume I'm having sex with her. You know, mm -hmm. if you were, you know, in the club, just automatically assume you're doing crazy. You know, I experienced that in college. And, you know, I really felt like Feeds and I, you know, grew the platform to really, you know, show that we're, you know, men, men of God. But we also know how to work hard and have a good time. And I was not expecting that reaction. Yeah. So I'm just like, here we go again. Yeah. Where it feels like I always have to just, you know, look around like, and worry about what other people think just because, you know, I don't want to be the reason why somebody doesn't follow God or like follow the channel. And, and that's why you and anyone listening to this has to get to a point where you own who you are. Yeah. So my thing is this, like I was a little worried at first too. 
But then I was like, you know what? F it. Because yeah. guess what? If we are actually going to be in a club at any point in life, I want them to know now. Yeah, yeah. Let it be known now. Yes. Let it get it out the way. You may see us there again. It can happen. All right. There might be a Miami trip 2022. All right. So who knows? So my thing is focus on the fact that if you actually go through the comments, there's a lot of people supporting it. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people saying, hey, you guys are being too, you know, judgmental. They're just having fun. There's a lot of people who understand the balance of it all. Yeah. So let's not let the the negative ones, and again, and I don't want to say negative ones to dismiss them because yeah. I understand how it may be hard for them to grasp it. But at the same time, we have to own who we are. So to me, I'd rather be, if someone says, well, Stefan, you're, you're a hypocrite. All right, well, I'm a hypocrite to you. Yeah. That's fine. I'm not going to, like, I'm not going to sit here trying to prove to every last person. Yeah. I know what I do. I know who I've helped. I know I follow God. I know the sacrifices I've made. You're not going to see all that. I'm not going to give you the whole rundown just to prove a point. Yeah. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Keep it moving. And you just, as long as you know you are still doing your best to follow what God wants you to do. That's it. But we're not going to be perfect. No, I love that. And even to Chris's point, like, I think the big thing for me, which I wasn't thrown off by it, is that anybody who's really followed the content versus the, the, the looky lose who just recently joined, you know, who just liked some of the content, is that we have been posting on our stories yeah. since... We've met each other. <laughs> you know what I mean? We've, we've been talking about we've it. We've been talking about multiple parties, yeah. whether it was a Houston party, from a Houston night. party, Latin yeah. night, <laughs> Chris met, when Chris met his wife in Miami My- oh, <laughs> in 2017. We've been talking about it. We've been showing it. This, like, this is public information. Yeah. And so, like you were saying, there is a community of people who they don't understand. They may be new to it. They have this certain perception of what it means to be a man who's trying to pursue God and things along those lines. But I love Stefan's point. You can't argue with them. I can't prove to you anything. Mm-hmm. Either, you know, you believe me for who I am or you believe what you want to believe. And and this kind of leads me to the next conversation, similar but different, but I want to go back to that first conversation in which I don't think people understand why guys like you and I make such a big deal of people in the comments of people who send us messages. Cause I think for some people be like, oh, why are you always letting the why are you always listening to them? But they don't realize, like, yo, we are teachers mm-hmm. and we care about every last student. Yeah. I think that's one of our weaknesses. Mm-hmm. You know, because I know for you, sometimes we talk and you'll get 99,000 amazing mm-hmm. comments and that <laughs> five negative one bothers you because you're a teacher you want everybody to be happy and healthy and to you know to really gain from our content because it's all we're trying to teach is people becoming better Mm -hmm. that's all it's about men women becoming better and so i think this people don't realize how much we care about every person and how it really bothers us when you know one of the sheep goes astray and Mm -hmm. tries to blame it on us Mm -hmm. yeah and i think so, so there's two parts to that. So yes, we we care because we're trying to help at the end of the day. And so when we see so, somebody negatively impacted, uh, whether that was the int- I mean, it wasn't the intent. We're never trying to negatively impact. But when that happens, it is a concern for us. But then again, we have to we have to learn because it, it's human nature to give more power to the negative than the positive. I think they said it takes uh, what is it one for every one damn, I forgot how it goes. Basically, the about. ratio yeah, is yeah, like, yeah, yeah. If, if you say something like 10 positive to one negative, something yeah, like that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. I wish I remember the exact breakdown. But yeah. anyway, the point is the negative has way more power. You see it with celebrities, they could get tons of support, get a couple bad comments, they react to the bad comments. Mm-hmm. Um, because this all this stuff is important to us, but we have to learn that again, some people just don't want to get it. Mm. Some people aren't trying to listen. <clears throat> and some people are looking for something to tear you down, yes. attack you with. Yes. So the minute they, you give them any kind of opening, they're going to run with it. They really can't be helped. And, and what's hitting my spirit, and I don't, I don't never like to sound too churchy, but Damn. you know what? I got to wow. say it. <laughs> yeah. there, there was a, a scripture in the Bible where <clears throat> it was something about the Pharisees. I can't remember which uh, uh, apostle or whatever. They went to Jesus and they said something about the Pharisees. And Jesus was like, don't talk to them. Those are children of the evil one. 
there are basically there are people who are not meant to walk the better path. Mm -hmm. And so essentially saying there are some people out there don't even engage, mm -hmm. don't even bother because they are not here mm -hmm. to align with what you got going on. They're not here to hear you out. They're not here to support you. They are here to come against you. Yeah. All right. And so the quicker you understand that, the better you are, better off you will be because now so many people, whether it be content creators, hell, whether it be people at work, at their own job, they're battling with someone who is meant to oppose you. Wow, that's good. All right? Don't get caught up in that. That's where the real devil's work is going. Mm -hmm. And so now the problem is we have to make sure if we allow the negative to pull us into that trap, yeah. we now we, we're pulled away from those who needed us. That's really we're pulled good. away from pouring the positive energy to where it needs to go. So we still have a responsibility where we have to say, okay, yes, we love everybody. We want to help everybody. But the best way to do that is to stay focused on those who are embracing it, who are supporting it. Again, not automatically dismiss anyone who comes across as negative. We can address it once, but after that, we don't get into no back and forth mm -hmm. and arguing. Nah, because we have to make sure we're staying focused and doing what we're supposed to do. No, I absolutely love that. And and that mm -hmm. and that part was I think we talked about it in December. Cause I feel like at one point, Chris and I were talking like in December, there was like an attack. You know what I mean? <laughs> it felt like everybody had something to say. I remember one time on, I, I went on Chris's video to, to pin um, the, the Patreon comment and they were talking about me in the first post. <laughs> I said, it's, it's Chris's video. Why are you mad at me for it? Kill him, dude. <laughs> I was like, bro, and it was a whole thread. I was like, bro, it's Chris's video. <laughs> take, take the smoke to my video. But no, you're right because what happens is we allow those moments to deter us from all the 999 people yeah. who want to grow, who want to be helped, who yeah. love the message, who love us. And that's the part where I told Chris recently, I know we answer all of our comments because of Gary Vee and all types of things. And we want to you know, respect Gary's last wishes to us. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but one of the things I was like, yo, Chris, moving forward with the negativity, the extreme unhealthy stuff, we're not even going to address it. We're only going to celebrate the good, you know what I mean? Because, like you said, they don't even want to listen. I had a video about it going back to the I am legend point. They don't even want to, they don't want to be saved. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? They don't want to be helped. They just want to find something wrong with you. And I think sometimes what happens, <laughs> I want guys to realize that. Because a lot of guys who have not leveled up or who are in the process of leveling up, right? What they're going to realize is no one's mad at you now because you're a nobody. No offense. Mm -hmm. you're, you're not a no, you're not, you're, you're nobody. The more you get successful, the more you get money, the more you get attention, then all of a sudden, the the, the haters, the detractors, they're yeah. going to come. Yeah. And they're going to come at you. And and whether you're Gandhi, whether you're Martin Luther King, you know what I mean? Whether you're Jesus Christ, they're going to want to destroy you. And you're going to ask yourself, what am I doing wrong? Because as a natural good person, when you have all this, not all, but like when you have people saying some really nasty thing, like that one dude who said he wanted to, Kill us from that, oh, yeah, that Damn. Yeah. <laughs> he said, nah, not, he keeps saying it nicely. He ain't not even describe me. He said, we deserve to be like stumped on the curb. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. Crazy stuff. <laughs> you know, and so we we're like, because then you you think, did I do something? Yeah. Did I offend him? Yeah. But then, but then, like you said, you realize that's literally, unfortunately, their purpose in life. Mm -hmm. Their purpose in life is to tear you down. It's a look for people who are on up and coming, who are doing good things, who are positive, and they want to tear you down because they're so miserable themselves. Exactly. And when they see somebody else smiling and laughing, having a good time, people love them. They're like, why? Why is that not happening to me? Mm -hmm. And instead of learning from it, mm -hmm. they want to destroy it. Yeah. Yeah, and you know the best thing to do is hit them back with positivity, man. Yeah. Like I've I've had situations where people attack me, and I'll just you know respond with something positive, like all right, thank you, appreciate it, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> yeah. But their tone changes. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So it's like you just don't want to feed into it. Yeah, because the minute you feed into it, it's just gonna get out of control. And and again, some people are trolls mm -hmm. looking to pick a fight, mm -hmm. looking to rile you up. You know what I'm saying. You can't get caught up in that. Yeah, I, I think my issue is, I'm going to go back to this. It's like, I want you to, you can attack me, you can control me, but do it in my DM. Yeah, you know, yeah. I be, I want to be the only one to have to deal with it because <laughs> if, you, if it's on a comment, it's on a YouTube wall, like, yeah, they're talking to us, 
but they can't influence some men that, that might be on the fence with us, might not, you know, questioning things. So if they see something, they'll see a comment, one wrong comment, then they just take that and run with it. You know, like I said, I'd much rather them come for me secretly and then be like, all right, I can deal with you later. No, delete the comment. <laughs> like, forget that. Because <laughs> if, 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 there's a good point to that. Yeah. I, I do believe I, I, if you leave negative comments on your post, it can invite other negative energy or it can create negative energy in someone else that wasn't even looking at it like exactly. that. All right. Yeah. So it is wise to, to delete it. It's almost like it, it, look at your social media as your house in your front yard and someone starts throwing trash in your front yard. You're not going to leave the trash there. Yeah. Take the trash and throw it away. Remove it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But if you leave the trash, other people will think, oh, I can throw my trash here too. Mm, and deep. now it starts to pile up. Yeah. So my practice is I typically, I should have mentioned that the first time, I typically just delete. Yeah. But, and, it, and it's all about how you're coming about it. If you comment on my video or whatever and it's a disagreement, mm -hmm. I'm cool with that. I have no problem with disagreement. But disrespect is unacceptable. Yeah. So any kind of attack, disrespect, whatever, I'm just going to delete it. Yeah. I'm not even going to give you the time of day. So I think that's the best way. And if you notice, my posts don't really get a bunch of negative comments mm -hmm. because people see it's not the place for that. Yeah. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? So set the tone by just deleting. Yeah. And, and, and like I said, I love Stefan's point because we have to remember, I think... Um, we haven't even really announced publicly that we partnered with YouTube. Shout out YouTube. Thank you, YouTube. Um, <laughs> Black Partner. Um, and one of the things that people always say about our page is like, bro, you guys average 99% likes to dislike ratio, yeah. which is unheard of. It's crazy. And Stefan averaged like 99.9%. <laughs> you know what I mean? So there is this reality where there's a huge you know, flock of people who are in love, who are grateful, who are excited, who are growing, who are maturing, you know, who are blossoming from the content. And I don't want us to ever lose the focus from those individuals. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because like I said, as <clears throat> this, as our brand grows, as Stefan's brand grows, it's only going to magnify. Yeah, it's absolutely. only going to be more people. It's only going to be more outlandish things, you know? And, but we, one thing that I'll never forget is every time we go out, the, the, the positivity is overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Whether we were at LA Fitness, whether we were at Bricks, wherever we were at, people came up to us. Uh, I think Chris has a theory uh, that somebody drove to the mall. <laughs> no, it's not a theory. I know for a fact. He, sa he said with his face, when we posted that we was at that mall, I'm telling you, Stefan, that man got in his car, got in his car, came. To whatever, to whatever uh, I think we was at Macy's or something. Yeah. He saw me, saw him, and he looked at me. I looked at him. I was like, I think he recognized me. Yeah. And I was like, I think he look. He not looking for me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> this man waited while we going down the escalator. You know, saw everybody, and here come fees. Lo and behold. <laughs> He stopped feeds and says hi. And literally, I was like, I know for a fact he came just, just to say hi. I know for a fact he had just got there. He just walked in there. And he really came to say hi to our people. That's, that's crazy, though. Yeah. Like you said, that, like people have been, you know, coming up to us, you know, nothing but positivity. So, you know, I couldn't even imagine getting negativity in person. I'd be wild. Yeah. But um, that's it's, it's encouraging. Like, I need this encouraging message because... Um, like I do read most of the comments and most of the time it is a lot of positive stuff and it just like I said I care about people and I want to mm -hmm. make sure that you know the work that we're doing is producing high care to high value people just period you know so whatever I have to do <laughs> <laughs> you know whatever we have to do to really make sure that works and make sure that that message mm -hmm. gets across you know I'm willing to do and make that sacrifice but like you said at the same time there is a balance we can't show you know, just these life that we're not living. We want to, we always been vulnerable. We always have been sharing and like, yeah, we, it's part of our life. We go out, you either like it or you don't, you mm -hmm. know, and I have to understand that, accept that mindset. And, and like you said, as you continue to get bigger, you know, some negative voices, they're going to continue to appear. And, you know, I just got to adjust to that. And, and let me just say, you know, the way I look at it is, you can either expose your life or they're going to expose it for you. Mm, yeah. So this is so much, this is actually a good thing because, so I know people would be shocked to see me in a club because my whole setup online doesn't present anything outside of the business, encouraging, supporting, all that kind of stuff. 
And on one end, we can say, oh, that's good because it stays on message, but then it's bad because it creates a false image. Yeah. Mm. And we don't want to create false images. We want to be honest. Again, I am okay if my true image is still falling short of what people want to see. I'm okay with that because at least it's my true image. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I want people to know this is where I'm at. There's nothing wrong with saying I still have room to grow. I still have room to improve. I can accept that. But I don't want you to think I'm something that I'm not. And so, again, this vlog, things like that, the great part about it is now they're going to get to know. And so now if, they, if someone else does see the next one, or it won't be the same reaction because yeah. now they know. That's you know right. what I'm saying? So better for that to happen than for someone to be like, oh, look at these hypocrites in the club and then expose you for <laughs> on their yeah, own yeah. time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And now you got to explain the situation. <laughs> nah. Spiritual word. Exactly. <laughs> exposed. <laughs> Let's oh. just get it out the way. Boom. This is what it is. Yeah. Cool. I so, feel that, man. That, that true... You know, self and and really portraying that, I love that because I that's one of the biggest fears. Is like you know, mm -hmm. people thinking I'm something, living this life, and it's like a, a whole different facade and, and false narrative. But yeah, telling the, like the people that hey, this is us in the in the front hand makes exactly. a lot of sense. I knew the world was an evil place. Mm. <laughs> At what point, Fees? What girl broke your heart? <laughs> Many girls. <laughs> I knew it was an evil place when I went on YouTube. I typed in Akuna Matata and I saw someone dislike that video. <laughs> I knew the world was evil. <laughs> and at that point, <laughs> there was nothing that could prove to me. Exactly. You know, and listen, that's a great feed example. A happy song, and they still felt the need to go on there and dislike the video. Like, why? Why do people some people just feel like they have to object yeah. to stuff like that? Doesn't matter if they do, it does nothing wrong to yeah. anyone. <laughs> Perfect example. Uh, <laughs> but and so moving moving in lieu of <clears throat> Cause I, like I said, I want guys to hear this message so they understand the challenges set ahead of them as they continue to improve and to level up. Mm -hmm. But there's another challenge that um, we've talked about in private, and, you've, and you said, you know what, let's talk a little bit about it in public. And to me, it's like dating as an influencer, mm -hmm. but also dating as a high character man mm. influencer mm. <laughs> <laughs> and we've had many <clears throat> conversations about that because there's just so many layers to that there's so many challenges and issues and i think a lot of people don't know it mm -hmm. a lot of people don't talk about it a lot of people don't you know really have this conversation and i feel like you would be <laughs> the perfect person to have this conversation because i feel as though that that what you and Chris go through is probably one of the biggest dating challenges for any man, especially in 2021. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't even know where to begin. It, it definitely is not easy. You know, so for the men who are building themselves up, I'm going to break it down like this. So if, you're, if you were just trying to be high value, in the sense of being highly desirable man, having certain qualities, and you're going to run amok and just have no moral compass, it could be easy, all right? But clearly, that's not the goal here. Yeah. The goal is high value and high character. Yes. Once we include character, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> once, once we include God in your life, because I said, yes, we may not be perfect, but there's still a level of conviction there. The game is, oh, let me say the game, but the, the whole situation is a lot more difficult, mm -hmm. all right? And I think a lot of people don't understand that because now there's just so much to consider. One thing I have to bring up, all right, because I was literally just speaking to someone, don't want to say his name, keep it private, but we were talking about how so many women are saying they want high value, high character, they want all this stuff, they want this man to have all these wonderful things, make money, whatever, whatever. But they're not really considering what they're going to have to do once they get him. Mm. All right? What they're going to have to do to now keep and maintain that relationship. So they're considering all the benefits of having this guy, but not the continuous work. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Because the mentality is, well, I deserve this. I deserve this. I deserve this. Yes, but are you prepared to keep working to keep it? Mm. And then <laughs> there's this mentality <laughs> that... Well, you you know, some people say you can't keep a man unless he, he doesn't want to be kept. 
granted, he has to want to be there, but you're not just absolved of any responsibility on his willingness to stay with you. Mm -hmm. There is work that has to be put on your end. And I think a lot of women don't realize if you want that, it's like if you want that high paying job, there's going to be more that's entailed in your job description. Mm. There, there's going to be more effort that has to be given. It doesn't necessarily get easier because now you're getting paid more. Now you have more benefits. So there's going to be more work being put in. Do you really want that? Or are you more comfortable at the current position <laughs> where there might be less required of you? <laughs> okay? Yeah. Be honest with yourself. But all that to go back to the point of it then makes the dating at that level harder because everyone wants you Everyone's not willing to put in the work to keep you. Mm. Lord. <laughs> <laughs> man, I'm telling you. It's, 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 it's crazy, man. Like, honestly, I feel like dating changes every six months. Like, I feel like, I feel like I, once I understand the old form, there's a new mm. form coming. And like you said, man, you, you have, you're in this position where, you know, like you are an influencer. And I realize that, you know, we are in like we're living a one percent life. You know, we can travel, we can go, we can work from anywhere, we can do, we make our own schedule, making good money. You know, we look good. <laughs> <laughs> so, so like, like, yeah. like, like, we are highly desirable. I understand that, but like you said, when people expect something of you, they're not willing to put the work in, or they're not willing to understand. Mm -hmm. You know, like. Because I'm such a futuristic person, and I, and I realized, you know what, Stefan, I blame you, mm -hmm. all right? <laughs> I blame you. Ever since we've been on tour, we've been around you, you know, I see things in women that I have never seen before in my life. Well, she's damaged. Uh, <laughs> she needs to heal. Uh, well, we don't have that connection. <laughs> so I'm just like, oh, my God. So now I'm looking at so many different things. Like, But even before like we even get to a, a, a certain point, so it's like on top of being highly desirable, on top of knowing all the information of where it's like where women, where their current state is, it is extremely difficult to date out here. And you know what? I'm not trying to be discouraged. I want to be encouraged to really continue to, uh, to you know, fight and, and be in Hafiz's position. It must be nice. <laughs> it must be nice. But um, like it's, it's a whole lot of things, man, and I'm still trying to learn and understand. So... One, in regards to being encouraged, you know, listen, I, I look at it this way. When you are aiming to be your best self, you will be rewarded in all areas of your life. Some, certain things take time, and we have to understand. I think that's one of the important messages for any man listening to this is it's not instant gratification. It isn't, oh, okay, I, I achieved this high-value, high-character man. Where's my, my perfect wife? Where, where's yeah. my amazing woman? Okay, yeah. listen, bro. It might be another year or two. It might take some yeah. extra time. There might be some other things you need to do. There might be some other small blind spots you got to cover before you can really have that relationship in your life or other certain things in your life. Now, also, to your point about, you know, after going on tour and stuff, the things you see in women, that's the other side of this I think a lot of men don't realize is as you, so it's almost like I always say, when you heal and you become healthier, you it's harder for you to deal with a damaged person. Mm. And it's easier for you to see the damage, all right? So when you become high quality, high value, whatever, it's easier for you to see someone's lacking the qualities that they need for you to be happy. So when true. we're operating at a lower level, we're much more willing to accept people. I always say a lot of relationships start because people overlook the red flags. Mm -hmm. All right? Or they, they flat out ignore, ignore them it. and make excuses for them. As you become high value, high character, your ability to ignore the red flags is diminished severely. Oh my God. So now, okay, it, it, it dating seems to get harder because now you start to see less qualified people or you start to knock people off a lot faster and quicker because like, damn, now I'm catching on to this, that, and the other. But when you were at your lower level, man, you ignored that she had a bad attitude. You mm. ignored that this was a toxic environment. You made excuses because, hell, you might have been operating in a toxic environment. Mm. So many dysfunctional things you ignored or overlooked because there was dysfunction within you. Mm. Man. And once you kind of mm. break through that, that's what makes it now harder because unfortunately, the vast majority of the world is operating in dysfunction. That's just an unfortunate reality. And becoming high value, whether it's woman or man, is a small percentage of people. Mm. 
Mm. So understand that if we if we defined it as the top three percent, I'm not saying that's what it is, but let's just say we define the top three percent. Mm -hmm. That means if you come across a thousand people uh, tomorrow, let's let's make it less. You come across a hundred people, only three of those people are going to even be qualified mm. yeah. to match your energy and level. And then within that three, will you really like any one of them? Yeah. Because you, they can be high quality, doesn't mean you're feeling them like that. Mm. So now you got to wait for the next batch of 100. Yeah. <laughs> and you got to keep going. So yeah. that's why it's going to get harder yeah. as you go higher in, in your life. What You had something? Yeah, no, no. I was, I was going to say, <clears throat> I, I absolutely love that point. Because I don't think people understand that when you're not healthy, mm. it's confusing. And I, and I would always say, my dad could not come in this house right now. <laughs> <laughs> if my dad came in here, his head will blow up. Because <laughs> my dad cannot stand things that are dirty. Mm. You know what I mean? And obviously, we're going to clean up. But you know, it's been a long, long week. Long week. <laughs> and so my dad, as a very clean man, cannot stand to be in dirty places. Mm -hmm. He cannot so when you are a healthy individual and you are a healed person, you cannot mm. stand. Not even that, oh, do work with them. It's like, I can't even be here. Exactly. It's like, I can't. I can't. It's like the most uncomfortable thing in the world. And I don't think people understand that difference. And so when a lot of people are like, oh, there's all these girls, all these girls. I'm like, no disrespect to them. No disrespect. <laughs> there's not as many women who have really done the healing work the way we have. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of people who have really mm -hmm. done all the things that we have done. So, so you, you guys see them from the outside looking in with their beautiful smiles and their great bodies and their beautiful faces. And like Chris is saying, we can see the hurt. We can see the damage. We can see the masculinity. We can see so many things that other people can't see because we've done so much of the work. Absolutely. And like you said, the, the, the ability to now tolerate it is pretty much non-existent. You just can't, you don't even want to be bothered with it. And so now to the outside looking in, we're being too picky. Mm. We're being unreasonable. Oh, judgmental. They've been, yeah, judgment. that, yeah. they been throwing that word to yeah. me, boy. You know, and it's like, no, we, we just know what you don't know yet. Mm. And if you mm. would do your work, mm. you would now start to see this very clearly. And also, let me add this, you know, once you get to a higher level, the, the stakes are higher. Mm -hmm. We cannot align ourselves with just any old woman. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So there's going to be more. Yeah. <laughs> Can you repeat that? Yeah. Now, please? We, once you reach a higher level, we cannot align ourselves with any old woman. It can't just be, oh, she looks good and she talks nice. There's got to be more there. Does she even support our purpose? Mm. Can she even embrace our purpose? Because she might have something going on in her life and she'll know how to get in alignment with us. That's going to be a deal breaker. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Because we can't afford to have someone who's going to distract us and destroy us. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? A lot of dudes, and, and I have to mention this because there's a lot of athletes. I'll see athletes talk about, uh, I, don't, I don't know his name, but there was this one athlete talking about how, you know, the woman has to have her own business, her own money. And I'm like, nah, bro, you're talking that nonsense because, and no disrespect by calling it nonsense, but I do view it that way, is because you've probably been played by women, all right, and used for your money. So now you're you're viewing them having money as security for you mm -hmm. to feel like she doesn't want me for that. Rather than us accepting, you chose the wrong women. Mm -hmm. You chose horribly. So now you think you're making better choices because you're taking this logical approach, not realizing that that woman's still probably not in alignment with you. Mm. And you're still picking the wrong woman. You think because she has money, now you're safe. You're not safe. Yeah. Because you still don't know how to, how to evaluate her character. You still don't know how to pick up on her spirit. You still clearly don't understand the importance of healing because you haven't healed. Because mm. if you did, you wouldn't be using the money as a scapegoat. Mm. You wouldn't be using it as a defense mechanism. So clearly you have your own issues. You see what I'm saying? Mm. And instead of understanding that, you're pushing this false narrative of they need to have their own No! Mm. More importantly, they need to be able to align with you. And of course, as a man, you need to find your purpose because having money don't equal purpose. Mm. You can be successful and still not have purpose. So as a man, you have to find your purpose and then see who aligns with that. But going back to the whole dating thing, yeah, it, it's 
it's a different ball game. Now, I, you know, I'm hoping the dudes listening to this don't get discouraged and like, yeah, F this high yeah. value stuff, I'm going to stay where I'm at. <laughs> nah, nah, listen. <laughs> Everyone needs to aim for higher, but I do want them to understand, yeah, it doesn't necessarily get easier. Again, if you're trying to do this the healthy way. Mm. You need some water. <laughs> yeah, boy, this boy is spitting out my heat. Oh my god, <laughs> my lord! I mean, I love what you said—the fact that um, that I feel like women don't understand that men that have high status, high care, to high value—you know—they care about their image. So you cannot just date anybody because once you leave me, you are an extension of me. Mm-hmm. Like you are gonna be known as Stefan Speed's gal. <laughs> yeah. so you gonna have to if you doing certain things. Everybody gonna be like, hey, Stefan. That's- that's your girl? That's your girl. <laughs> <laughs> but I've been, I've been having, I've been having conversations and, and it's like, you know, with uh, some women's past or women like platforms and things and they not taking into consideration. If you talk about, you know, sex a lot, or if you talk about negative things or bad relationships all this, all the time, most men don't want to be associated with that. Mm. But they say to me, you know, it's a it's a low level of thinking. <laughs> like, you don't want to understand. You you are all people. You have built a platform. You should understand where they're coming from. So I'm just thinking, I'm like, you don't understand. Like, when you talk about those things, you associate yourself with those things. You know, if we date you, we are also those things. Mm. And it's like, we are, we are a higher standard. We don't want to be known for that kind of talk or, you know, that kind of business or whatever. But I, I just love that point. So my, my question to you is... But real quick, before you ask that ahead. question, let go me ahead. make this comment. So, you know, we, we see things a little bit different yeah. when it comes to that specific yeah. topic. Now, hold on yeah. now. <laughs> we going to cap on this out. Yeah. Are we going to do this? No cap. Listen. So I agree with you to a certain extent. That's fine. Tell me. So here's the thing. I, and number one, I agree that in general, like you said, most men of high value, high status, they have to consider the woman's image, plain and simple. Okay. And most women are going to get disqualified because they're not taking that seriously enough, okay. especially in today's world. All right. However, I, at least I'm going to speak just for me. I cannot speak for other men. Mm-hmm. For example, let's say I meet a woman and let's say she's a stripper. All right, but I didn't meet her at the strip club. I, don't, I didn't go to the strip club. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right. Right. Let's just say I met her at the mall, whatever. Right? Yeah. We hit it off. Everything's amazing. There's a connection there. I find out you're a stripper. Now, I'm a believer in if I find a connection, I'm not letting your past stop me from being with you. All right. What about her present? Huh? What about her present? Exactly. So the so the, the so the key is this: I will not hold your past against you. But are you now prepared to walk away from that for us to now move forward in a different direction? If you're prepared to do that, I can deal with the people saying, oh, well, you got with a stripper. Listen, we ain't perfect. We were just talking about it earlier. Yeah, yeah. We ain't perfect. We're human. If we look at the Bible, hell, Moses was a murderer. Yeah. A lot of these people have passed that were not great, mm-hmm. okay? I am okay with not holding your past against you, but you cannot continue in this image that now works against me if we're going to be together. So that's where I differentiate is as long as you're willing to now make a change. So even if you're a woman who, let's say, posts very provocatively on IG, I'm not going to hold it against you. Whatever you posted before, whatever today's date is, (laughs) fine. Mm -hmm. However, if we're going to be together, yeah, we're going to take some of those posts down and things like that. Now, if, if you're not okay with that because you feel like I should just respect it, all right, then that's when we can't work. You know what I'm saying? I we de- we have to have a compromise somewhere. You know what I'm saying? And of course, I wouldn't want you to continue to post like that. But if you're willing to make that adjustment, okay, cool. So that's my my position. But go ahead with your question, Brett. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I think it's a good. I think it's a good point. Um, I I heard you say you know it's a hundred people, three percent of girls we we will have they will at least meet the standard. Yeah. You know. So my question to you is, how can we make that three to like six? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, what do we have to do? Like, what what are some ways that you know we can be introduced to more high quality women? Where do we find them? Who are introducing them to? What do we have to do as men? Is what I'm asking. You. I, well, I think we're doing it. I think having these honest conversations about what high value or high character or highly desirable men, whatever label we want to throw on it, what the good quality guy wants in a woman. I think a lot of women have been lied to, led astray, or have been conditioned to believing a false narrative as far as what men want. So by having these conversations, 
many of them are now learning. Now, can we make everyone embrace it? No. But like you said, we're just trying to go from three to six. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just getting three more percent to say, yeah. all right, I can do this. Then we're, we're going to win. So I think that's, that's all it really boils down to. But also, I think, and the roommates, y'all two are doing this, is creating more high value men. I think that by na- even though I do believe that women, men follow the lead of women in the sense that if women set the standard tomorrow of, we, this is just an example, we won't deal, date a drug dealer. You have to have a certain kind of job, right? You would start to see men fall off from being drug dealers. If they really felt like they could not get any woman with this, they would stop doing that. So I do feel like men respond to women in that way. However, I do think that as more men grow and step into their true potential, it will have a positive impact. Maybe not directly as far as getting the woman you know that he engages with to step up, but hell, maybe it's your own daughter if you have a kid. Mm-hmm. And now being a high-value man, you're going to be a man in the household that raise a healthier, happier daughter. And that, so that might not be beneficial to us right now, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah. at least beneficial to the next generation of men coming up. Yeah. There's going to be some kind of impact somewhere. So I think having the conversations will help the women, you know what I'm saying? And again, some of them are going to embrace it, some of them aren't. And for the men, helping them continue to grow, and that will also have an impact. And what are those qualities you're talking about? <laughs> Like as far as you say, like high high value, high character men, that what they want in a woman. What are those qualities? Even though they might not accept no, it. And I, I want to take that question because I want to go a different direction. But let's stay there because it's cool. I want to flip that because I I wanted to talk about, it, but I wasn't sure if we had space to talk about this. But it kind of seeming convenient right now because there's a conversation about you know the whole big thing you know due to you know the infamous Kevin Samuels. Yeah. <laughs> Is all this thing talk about high value, which you know we've been talking about for years, you've been talking about for years, but now it's getting popular. And so I think there is a clear understanding of, you know, w- w- like the three major things that make a man high value, right? Mm-hmm. And and the key word to value is valuable to the opposite gender. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like I always say, a high value man is loved by women and respected by men. He's mm-hmm. valuable. Everybody mm-hmm. wants him, you know. And I would, I would simply say those three things would be masculinity, some form of financial yeah. <laughs> finances, yeah. you know what I mean, and more than likely a form of status because of his career. Whether he's a doctor, lawyer, you know, author, you know, entrepreneur, those are usually the three things. Generally speaking, that as a guy, you know, if you're a masculine, aka confident, all that stuff, you have a certain amount of money, you have a high status career, you're going to be living good. Mm-hmm. So if you were to say, sorry, but then what I've seen that women have done is now when they're creating that high value woman conversation, they simply take the man standard and just add W-O to it, <laughs> you know? And, and so, but there's a difference between the men, the women that men really desire. The women that men are like, yo, this girl is extremely valuable. Everybody wants that woman. So if you were to give those three attributes mm. that you're like, yo, on a, because uh, end of the day, Value doesn't mean character, right? So let's let's separate yeah. those two. But on a sheer societal value to, to men, what would be those three traits that you feel like women have that make them high value women? All right, I'm gonna answer that. And before I say that, you know what popped in my head that I, that I found interesting because when you said the high value man is uh, what the say it again, he's loved by women and respected by men. Yes, loved by women, respected by men, and so he has those certain qualities that. And so I was thinking about how when you said women have taken those and put the W.O. in front of it. And what's interesting is that I can see women trying to make the argument that, you know, younger women look up to women who are successful and have careers. But when you really think about it, and if we're honest with ourselves, younger women look up to the women who have family and husband. You know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? That's what they're really fantasizing about. Mm -hmm. So to lead into your question... I'm not sure how to define that specific quality, but I really feel like the the, the trait that women uh, respect or really look up to and that men value is, I guess, that motherliness, a woman who is able to attract or have a family in her life and be this great mother. Women 
honor that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, but overall, femininity, I believe, is just... It is what it is. Because when a woman sees a, another feminine woman, she sees a happy woman. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So who doesn't want to be happy? Yeah. Who doesn't... Who doesn't appreciate that unless they're miserable themselves? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And of course, we all know men are drawn to feminine energy. So it's one of those qualities that, again, like you said, loved by one and respected by the other. So I would, I guess I would say femininity is the other one. And then uh, physical attraction, mm. to be honest with you. Let's be real. Women, again, we already know the men yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> love them a physically attractive woman. Yeah. And women, whether they want to acknowledge it or not, they... That's what they're looking up to as well. That's what they're dreaming they could look like. That's what they're trying to mimic. Granted, some people take it to an unhealthy place, but that is what's going on. So I would say physical attraction, feminine energy, and again, th- that first one, I don't know what proper word to use, but I guess motherliness or just the fact that you have a successful relationship. Yeah. It's it's about the whole package together. Okay. All right? Because so, for example, um, let's be real. A, a woman could be super pretty, all right, and she have a decent body, and she's gonna be able to get away with having a decent body more yes. because she's so pretty. Exactly. So her whole package, she's already qualified. There's gonna be tons of men after her. Mm-hmm. Another woman may not be that cute, mm-hmm. but her body is amazing, <laughs> yeah, all right, yeah, yeah. and she's gonna get access to those men because her, the balance of it all is good enough okay, to where they accept it. So to me, I look at it as okay. it's it's a total package, and as a woman, it's like. How you make the whole thing work. Yeah. Because some people aren't going to be blessed with naturally amazing good looks. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't want them to think, well, you can never be a <laughs> <laughs> high value. You can never. Because you're not the cutest. No, if you take care of the rest of yourself and you enhance everything else, enhance. Whenever I say enhance, <laughs> I don't want you to think <laughs> surgery, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean improve upon, yeah, yeah, all right? Yeah then you're going to be good. But if you want to do surgery, that's your thing. I just want to throw that out there. I'm not judging anyone who does surgery. But anyways, um, yeah, so I look at it the whole thing. So if we're going to throw a different third one. No, that's good. I think I think that's cool. Okay. Yeah, if you're going to, if you, I just want to make sure, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say this. Okay. Not that I think this is a trait anymore that is loved by one and respected by another, but I just feel the need to mention it. Domestic ability, m- more specifically cooking. Mm. I feel like the art of cooking has been lost. You know, they used to always say the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. Yeah. And so people have lost their way because they, <laughs> they don't know how to cook anymore. <laughs> and they don't even care. What are cooking? Never mind. And listen, don't get me wrong. I know some people might know. jump in. I stopped. I stopped. <laughs> Something is seriously wrong with you sometimes. <laughs> I know some people might jump in and say, well, men should cook too. Listen, there's not, everyone should know how to survive mm-hmm. and make enough food so that they can be okay on their own. Mm-hmm. But I think a lot of women overlook how powerful. I've even told women, I said, listen, start posting on your social media cooked meals and watch the reaction you get. See if you won't start drawing more attention because that still appeals to us as men. A woman who knows how to cook and enjoys cooking, it's automatically you gain points. Yes, you may not uh, lose points because you don't know how to cook, depending on the guy, because some guys are really strict about that. But... (laughs) You you're gonna have a good a good thing in your arsenal yeah. if you know how to cook. So I would just say that's something that more people more women should embrace. No, you hundred percent. I'm gonna make a video. It's gonna be called "Women We're Trying to Help You Out." <laughs> 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 because like if they if if you do something that is opposite of what everybody else does, it's more attractive mm-hmm. in a good way. Only, in a good way. Yes. That's what I mean. So it's like if 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 women say, "Oh, I'm not gonna cook for no man." Okay, well they're not gonna get the man that they want. <laughs> That's the dude. It's the man that they want. So if you show yourself cooking, it will make you more attractive towards guys. Yes. And you don't understand it's a competition. <laughs> Do not women don't understand that it's a competition out here. If you want the top of the top level guy, all the women want them. But no you're one not- wants to hear that they have to compete. They don't like that word. I'm not saying you're wrong. Yeah. I'm just, just saying. saying they You're don't, right. they don't like you. that I word. They, they don't, don't like, like it. it, but it's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> we would say what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. And to Chris's point about how so many women want these top tier men, I also find a struggle of you know high character men such as yourself, high value men such as yourself, is that now everyone that you date expects you to marry them. Oh, oh. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Hit 
hit me right <laughs> in the heart. <laughs> and and if you don't marry them, if you choose, <laughs> <We're sorry. laughs> if you choose no. to not be with them. Now you're the bad guy. Mm. Now you let her on. Yeah. Now you're not the man in your videos. Now you're not the man you present yourself to be. Now all of a sudden they try to attack you as a man because you don't desire to continue the relationship any further. Talk. <laughs> <laughs> Talk. This is a real problem. Um, I think a lot of women, they may or may not realize it, but they're... When they go on a date with a guy, even if you're not, quote unquote, in the limelight, even if you maybe not even considered high value, if in that date she determines, oh my gosh, this is a guy I can see myself with, a lot of women are already uh, imagining the wedding that day. Mm -hmm. Now, some people might say, that's crazy. No, it, it happens for real. But yes, when, as you mentioned, when you're an influencer, when you're someone who already has a public image... They're coming into it now because mm -hmm. they've already made up in their mind that they want you like that. Mm -hmm. the, the date was just to confirm, so to speak, at that point. And so now, yes, that, you know, I literally have a video called You Will Always Be the Bad Guy. Because for men in general, when you don't give that woman what she wanted, mm -hmm. she is now going to view you as an F-boy. Mm -hmm. She is now going to view you in a negative light. Mm -hmm. Even in scenarios where we discussed mm -hmm. what this is and we agreed upon a, a, a whatever structure, if, it's, if it doesn't align with what she really wanted, there will still be backlash. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Now, I don't ever want to say every woman does this, but it happens a lot. I would argue the majority. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And, and for any woman who says, nah, 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 well, have you met that guy you even view mm. in that high of a regard? Because that's where it gets tricky. It's one thing if you're just thinking he's okay, I kind of like him, you won't, this won't happen. Mm -hmm. But when you view him like, oh my gosh, he's damn near a unicorn or a unicorn, I cannot pass this up. Now, some women will try to convince themselves, well, let me just try to be his friend. No, but you really want a relationship. Mm. And now when he doesn't give you the relationship, you make him the bad guy. But the other reason why you become the bad guy, and I've explained this in the video, is because... In order for her to detach herself emotionally, she has to create a negative image of you. Mm. If she continues to hold on to a positive image of you, she one has to look at herself in the mirror, and that's not easy to mm. do. And she now has a harder time letting go or accepting that this doesn't work. Mm. I also want to throw in there that I always make the argument that women know connection better than men. They know when a connection is there or not. They understand that spiritual level better. But when they meet a guy they really want, they completely forget about connection. Mm. Mm. It doesn't even exist anymore in this dynamic because they're locked into what they desire. And this is where things get tricky. And so, yeah, as you said, the problem then becomes I can meet, I can go on 10 dates in the next two weeks. They could all be great women. But that doesn't mean you're the woman for me or mm -hmm. I'm the man for you. But now I'm in a position where I'll have to let down 10 women who will now start to look at me as, oh, he ain't what he said he was or whatever, whatever. No, I, I, I was honest the whole time. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't matter because now they're in disappointment. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so, again, it just goes back to where as a man, you have to be very mindful. And this is why you have to you, – you can't even take dates unless you really feel like – this has the, at least the potential to go no. somewhere. You see what I'm saying? If you don't, if you know for a fact there is no potential whatsoever, you just want to have a good time, be very careful. Mm. Because you're, you're setting it up for disappointment. You know mm. what I'm saying? At least if there's potential, we can't guarantee it's going to work out and someone's going to be upset no matter what. But it's, it's tough, bro. Mm. It's tough. No, nah, he struck a nerve. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, man. I, I, it, he, he hit it every nail on the head. And I've been, I remember telling, you know, some of my guy friends when they had woman trouble and they feel bad because it didn't work out. I'm like, fam, she gonna have to hate you for her to get over you. Like you have to accept yep. it. And you know, depending on the woman character, mm -hmm. she may send you some stuff that you may not like reading. She may, you know, do some things on social media that she shouldn't do. And, and let me just jump in. She may even create a false narrative. All right. 
and I, you know, I don't want women to think we're attacking them right now, but this is just reality. We've lived this. We've <laughs> seen this. Every story you're hearing about what this man did was not the accurate story. Mm. It was the story she created to make her the victim and to make him the big bad guy who hurt her so she can come out looking clean, gaining sympathy, mm. all right? And now you don't tarnish this man's reputation and image to make things easier for you emotionally. Mm. This happens a lot more than people think. I, and, I, and I don't want people to think that we're saying this in a way that... You know, there are some situations that, yes, the man was an asshole, excuse my language, he did do wrong, and it was valid what she's saying. But there are tons, tons of examples of where women misconstrue or twist things to make him seem like he's the bad guy. Because, again, what woman wants to go back to her girl? If she done spoke mm. to her female friends about how amazing you were, she's about to go on this date, oh, my God, there's this great guy, all this other stuff. Now she got to come home and say, he ain't want me? Mm. Hell no. <laughs> Hell no. Mm. She, that's not going to be her response. Wow. She's going to find some way in most cases. There, there may be some very honest women that will say that. But in most cases, she's going to have to now figure out, how do I present this to make it, no, I didn't want him, or mm. he did this, or it was, so, you know, blah, 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 to make herself seem, you know, come out looking clean. Yeah. No, no, this is a, a fantastic point. And, and by God's grace, a lot of the girls I did are very high character women. So they give me rave reviews. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, and, and so I, with them, but they share it in a respectful way. They will say something like, oh, we just didn't work out. Mm -hmm. You know, which may or may not be the truth, but that's what they share. But for a lot of people, I know that's not the case. I know people who sent you messages, who sent you messages. <laughs> and, and like you said, they changed the whole story. And that's what I always tell women to be careful of. When you're hearing men and women, let's use men and women a lot. We've been picking yeah. up women. <laughs> let's use men and women. I encourage people that some people aren't telling the full story about the entirety of the relationship. Mm -hmm. They're only telling their side to make themselves look good. This is just my personal opinion. Are there women who've been abused by men? 100%. Yes. Are there women who've been cheated on by men? 100%. Are there women who've been in an unhealthy relationship with the wrong guy? 100%. But in my personal opinion, that's the minority, not the majority. And so in a majority of relationship settings, there are, there are two, vic um, two victims and two villains. You and I. I've done wrong to you. You've done right by me. I've done right by you. You've done wrong to me. We're, we, we've done good and bad to each other. And so whenever I'm talking to somebody and they can never articulate what you did wrong in a situation, usually to me as a red flag to you're always viewing the guy as the bad guy. Mm -hmm. And it's only a matter of time before I become the bad guy too when you don't get your way with me. Mm -hmm. And that's the part where I encourage guys I remember I did a video on it and Derek Jackson responded to it. <laughs> but I was trying to encourage guys, accountability is important. When you talk to a woman and you ask her, okay, how was last relation? How things go with this guy? If you don't hear any part of the story where it's like, you know, he was a great guy, but we didn't work out. He was like, if there's nothing positive about no guy, it's always he was a bad guy. And, and you know, and I, I, to, to, to piggyback on that, for, for men, because I'm sure there are men who are pumping their fists because they've gone through this. The thing is, when you're in the midst of this type of situation, do not try to battle the woman. You can't. Don't try to sit there arguing back and forth. Listen, one, like you said, take accountability for what you did do wrong. Mm -hmm. Because there, there are some things. Like, even in my situations, I realize, okay, you know what? Maybe I wasn't clear enough here. Maybe I did misunderstand this. I will acknowledge that and take responsibility for those things. State your case as far as whatever false narrative or things that she may be wrongly accusing you of, but don't sit there trying to go back and forth. Mm. Because all you're going to do now, here's the crazy thing. Even if it was a false narrative, a lie being told, she will now use this new battle yeah. <laughs> that you went back and forth with her about, that you may now say some messed up things, mm -hmm. to now use that yeah. as the justification. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're only feeding, mm. yeah. okay? Feeding her story mm -hmm. with negativity. Don't give her more negativity. Just 
take responsibility for what you did do wrong, state your case for what was it, you know, the way she thinks it is or how she wants to present it, and that's it. Yeah. You leave it at that. You know what I'm saying? And you keep keep it moving. But there's no way we can control. Like right now, there could be tons of people making fake stories. Can't control it. Mm-hmm. It is what it is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, yeah. that's big, man. I think I think yeah. It, like you said, you have to be very mindful who you date nowadays. And yep. I understand that, and I realize that because mm-hmm. when you when you sit down with us one on one, it's gonna be hard mm-hmm. to resist because the resume is so good. Yeah. The resume is really good. So it's like I I understand that like you know that it's a it's I don't like making women feel bad, you know, and I don't like them telling me, like, you know, if what I did wrong and all those different things. So in order to combat that, I just have to make sure that I choose wisely of who I date. And listen, no matter how wisely you choose, oh, you may Lord. still, yeah. <laughs> we, we have to kind of just understand, like I'm, I've come to accept if I go on three dates next week, I may end up the bad guy after it's all said and done. Yeah. yeah. I can't. Uh, you know what? I'm done stressing that. I'm done. Because now what happens is you end up living in this self-imposed prison yeah. because you're always worried about how people are going to take things the wrong way. You just have to make sure you're doing your part. You know what I'm saying? As a man, make sure you're being respectful. Make sure you're being honest and transparent. Make sure you're, you know, you're, you're doing what you're supposed to do and that you're not, you're not giving any blatant ammunition for them to use. If they create their own... It is what it yeah, is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think, uh, who told me that before? What's it, Devon Franklin on the Patreon mm-hmm. yeah, episode? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he, he was like, Chris, as you continue to get better, level up, you know, improve yourself, we're going, going to desire you. And if you don't want them for whatever reason, you will be the bad guy. Yeah. You just have to accept that. He said, I was that too. So when he told me that on the Patreon episode, which is a good episode. Great episode. Um, yeah, and think about that. Devon Franklin. Devon, yeah. Even Devon Franklin. Franklin. Devon That's what I'm saying. Franklin. It doesn't matter who you are, yeah, man. Yeah. It does not matter who you are. Yeah. You are still going to have it happen to you. So you kind of just have to learn not to internalize it, yeah. not to let it get the best of you. It's just a part of this process. Yeah, and that's why I think it, it kind of puts the whole episode together about identity. I think that's what I heard mm-hmm. the most about this episode. Once you know who you are... Once you know you're a man who's attempting to go on this journey of being a high value man, a high character man, a man of integrity, you know this is who I am. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna make mistakes. I'm gonna disappoint some people. I'm unfortunately gonna let people down. But I am still a man of excellence. I'm still a man of greatness. You know, I'm still this individual. And so whether you're dating, whether you're creating content, whether you're making money, whether you're doing business, you have to come to realization that you can't make everybody happy. Absolutely. And even though you don't make people happy, even though people are mad at you and they say things about you, doesn't mean that it's true. So I don't want anybody to feel that way. I want men to embrace their identity. I want men to know that they're a man of greatness. And I don't want anybody to accept that because my greatest fear is that when men accept that, they'll give up. Mm-hmm. They'll give up trying to follow God. They'll give up trying to be a high character person. They'll give up trying to be high value because they'll realize it's too difficult. And my last point, I'll let you ask your question. And this is what stood out to me. I think it was a couple of days ago. I was so exhausted. I was like, man, I feel like there's so much. Everyone's mad at me. Everyone's frustrated at me. All these pressures and expectations. And a voice came in my head and know what it told me? Heavy is the head who wears the crown. Mm. Mm. Heavy is the head who wears the crown. So what that means is that if you're going to be this king, this, this individual, there's a level of responsibility that's on your back that most guys, it will break them. Mm-hmm. It will destroy them. So if you want to be on top, if you want to be high value, if you want to be a one in a generational man, heavy is the head that wears the crown. And, and with that, that's why it's so important for men who are in their journey to learn how to handle these things at the current level. Mm-hmm. So at every level, there's going to be criticisms, judgment, things of that nature. But if, like you said, as you get higher, it intensifies. But if you can't handle it at your lower level, you're not going to be ready for it when you get to that higher level. Learn how to deal with it now. Learn how not to let these things bother you now. You know what I'm saying? Learn how not to let people's false perceptions of you throw you off in any kind of way. 
Because now, as you continue to go up that ladder, you're going to be equipped for that next level. You know what I'm saying? You got you to gotta basically defeat the current level boss. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And then you'll get ready. But it's going to always get stronger, yeah. but you're going to get stronger that's with each true. battle. And so now that's how you, you, you get ready for what's coming. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's real good. I think my last question is, um, as, you, as we were talking about dating these women, and if it doesn't work out, you know, we have to make sure we're in tune with ourselves and understand that, you know, they may say some things, but as long as our identity is intact, you know, we good. But some guys, and I even felt like some of this, um, you know, recently in my life, where you get to that point where you just don't care anymore. And, like, where you just, like, you go, f- not complete savage mode, but since, like, you know, you're not considering her feelings, you know, you're you're just, like, like you kind of just, like, if you're not on my rules, then you're not, you know, you're not with me. So I want to make sure that, you know, we tell these guys, or even if you want to explain to them, where it's a healthy balance of, like, your identity is good as far as if she says something bad about you, but I don't want you to go too far as if you go complete savage, you don't care, you just, you know, you're going to do what you want to do regardless. So let me let me make this point. I remember when I was, I think I may have been 18 years old or whatever, um, had a situation where a female friend who I had feelings for broke my heart. And after that, I was like, F life, F these women, I'm going to do whatever I want. That was probably the weakest move I could have made as a man. Mm. Anytime you let a woman or anybody take you away from your true character, that's weakness. That's not strength. Mm. All right? So we think, okay, we're empowering ourselves because we're saying, F it, we don't care. No. You let them basically remove you from where you belong and operate on a lower level because you're hurt. Plain and simple. So... None of this should pull you to a place where you don't care. Because not caring is not high value, high character. Mm. Plain and simple. Men of high value, high character are still mindful of other people and the impact they're having on other individuals. When you become blind to that, you are simply one of those damaged people Mm. who are running amok and defending it with, I'm just looking out for myself. No, you're just a damaged individual who doesn't want to do the work within yourself. Mm. Plain and simple. So... We have to always hold ourselves to a standard of, again, we won't be perfect. And even if you have a moment, because there might be a moment, it, it happens, but you can't stay there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So if, if you got pissed off or hurt one day and that night you went out and said, F it, I understand. I'm not, I'm not validating yeah. or, or encouraging it, but if you're going to stay there for the next three weeks, month, no, 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 that's not acceptable. Mm-hmm. Pull yourself back out. Be a man about this. And when I say be a man, meaning stand on your strength of your character, of who you were before you even got hurt. Mm -hmm. Learn from it and operate at a better level, not a worse level. Yeah. Love it. I love it. Stefan. Yeah. (laughs) So much wisdom as always. You know, like I said, I really wanted... I like this episode because I think people got to proceed, take a um, you know a step into your life to see some of the things that you go through, some of the things Chris goes through, some things we all go through, and I think that's what the roommates is all about. Mm-hmm. You know, the roommates is all about you know helping men become the best versions of themselves. But we're vulnerable. We're we're gonna be honest about fears, shortcomings, failures, all of those things. And I'm just glad that you came up here to have the conversation. So, ladies, you ain't date Stefan. <laughs> <laughs> He cannot guarantee to marry you. <laughs> He'll get to know you. There's a connection. To move forward. But a date does not mean you're his wife. My name is Hafiz. Chris, the star of the show, baby. We're joined by Stefan Speaks. We are the roommates, guys. Thank you so much. And have a great day. Woo!